I've built 27 businesses. I, I like to, I don't call my failures failures. I call them seminars. And several of my businesses have been worth tens of millions of dollars. Most have been, you know, spectacular flaming seminars. <laughs> Would you like to win and achieve success at what you do? Welcome to the Winner's Ways Podcast, where we create winners every day. And now, your host, the author of Winner's Ways book and life coach, Bola Alabi. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Winner's Ways podcast. Uh, on today's episode, we have an awesome guest with us. Uh, he's a real estate uh, investor, he's a business owner, he's a philanthropist. So I'm so, so, so excited to have Rod Cliff with us today. I'm willing and I'm looking forward to learning from him. And I know you guys will benefit as well. Hey, Rob, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Bola. I'm looking forward to this. Let's have some fun today. Awesome. So can you please go ahead and introduce yourself to my audience so that they can get to know you better? Sure, sure, sure. Well, why don't I just tell a little bit of my story? Because I think it will it'll give us some pre-frame for some conversations we can have after I do. Um, so let me go way back. I immigrated to this country, uh, like it sounds like you did as well from your accent. Uh, I immigrated from the Netherlands, from Holland, you know, wooden shoes and windmills. And, and we ended up in uh, Denver, Colorado, where I lived for 30 years. Now, when we first got here, we really struggled. I was six years old, like I said, came with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vancha, And we really struggled. Uh, I remember eating expired food. We used to go to an expired food store. I remember drinking powdered milk with our cereal in the morning and, you know, wearing clothes, hand-me-down clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school till I got a job and could buy my own clothes and ultimately buy a car. And I'm sure that you've got listeners that have it harder than we did or had it harder. Um, and, the, you know, the good thing for me was that I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. So she babysat kids so that we'd have enough money to eat. And with her um, babysitting money, she actually was a bit of an entrepreneur. So she invested in the stock market um, and made money. She also invested in real estate successfully. And, and, and she was really the impetus for me to get in real estate because she bought the house across the street from us when I was 14 for about $30,000. This is 1974. And like three years later, I was about to graduate from high school and she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep. And I said, what? You made $20,000 and you didn't do anything? And I said, forget, forget uh, college, mom. I'm getting into real estate. And so I got my real estate broker's license right when I turned 18 which you could do back then with education. You know, now they got smart to be a broker. You actually have to have some experience. But I was, uh, you know, I thought I was going to be rich in real estate. Well, my first year in real estate, I maybe made, uh, you know, $8,000 approximately. My second year, maybe $10,000. But my third year, I made over $100,000. And so what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10X my income? Well, what happened was I met someone that taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology and how truly 80 to 90% of your success in anything is just that, your mindset and psychology. And so, you know, fast forward to today, I've owned over 2,000 houses that I've rented long term. Um, I own thousands of apartments and have owned thousands of apartments. And, and in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. And you might be like, wow. And I was like, wow. And I thought, I actually thought I was a real estate god, okay? I got a head so big I could barely fit it through a door. And you know that when that happens, God or the universe has a tendency to maybe give you a little smackdown? Well, that was 2008. I lost that $17 million and a lot more. I actually lost $50 million in 2008 conservatively. And so, you know, uh, and, and I started my podcast to talk about that story and, and, and how – you know, why it happened and how it happened and, and to hopefully motivate people if they were to invest to, mo to invest in apartments because uh, they're just more, more stable. But, uh, um, you know, and, and just and also to talk about the importance of mindset because it really is all mindset. So, you know, if you'd like to drill down on, you know, how I was able to recover 
you know, what I did to recover. I'm happy to, you know, chat about that with you, Bola. So, hey, Rod, that's awesome. And uh, honestly, you, you spoke about mindsets and mm-hmm. I do talk about mindsets as mm-hmm. well, because I believe uh, our mind is very, very powerful. Yes. We can use it to, you know, rise to our fullest potential and we can let it keep us as, you know, mediocres, whereby people don't achieve anything in their lives. But right. I really want to hone in on your story. You talk okay. about your uh, humble beginning, how you uh, and your family came to the United States. Yes. And how your mom helped you and how you, you know, use your mindset to believe that you can, you know, accomplish more. Can you break that down? A little sure. bit for me. Sure, how, sure. How can, how can we use our mindset to achieve success? Sure, how sure, sure. We won't do it. Right. Well, here's the thing. For example, you know, if uh, I just had a boot camp this last weekend, I had 500 people pay to attend. It was virtual, and uh, and I've had thousands and thousands of people attend my boot camps. Um, and the first thing we do is a goal setting workshop. Okay. I call it goal setting on steroids, because how do you get anything if you don't know what the heck it is? You need clarity around what it is that you want. And I will tell you what you really need is what Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich calls a burning desire. You've got to want it because you have to really want something to push through the fear, to push through any limiting beliefs that you may have about yourself, um, to get uncomfortable. You know, a lot of people are comfortable and the comfort zone is a warm place, but we both know nothing grows there, right? So that burning desire was is what gets you to push through. And that's, you know, that's a critical piece of, of success is, is you got to want it. Because, you know, we all, you know, when I, when I immigrated, I didn't speak English and I got thrown into school and my mom, proud Dutch woman, and I discovered what bullies were for the first time. And my mom, being that proud Dutch woman, thought it'd be a great idea to send me to school in wooden shoes and these leather shorts that the Germans wear for Oktoberfest. So I got my butt kicked again. And then, you know, the bullies would chase me home and she'd chase them off with a fly swatter next day, butt kicked again. And so I created this limiting belief that I wasn't good enough. And and uh, and so, you know, a lot of people have these, you know, and there's a reason that the acronym for belief systems is BS, because 99 percent of them are BS. OK, they just have, you know, we've had stuff, stupid stuff happen in our childhood that we have, you know, place, you know, emotional weight on, but they really can hold people back. And so, again, it's it's really want, you know, knowing that you want more out of life, identifying what it is, having clarity around what it is, discovering why it's an absolute must That's the real driver to get you to push through that stuff. Or maybe you're fearful, fear of failure, for example. But I will tell you, most entrepreneurs fail their way to success. I was mentioning to you, Bola, before we started recording, I've built 27 businesses. And I don't call them failures when they fail. I call them seminars. So, you know, several of my businesses have been worth a lot of money, tens of millions. and But most have been spectacular, flaming seminars. You know, uh, because we really do fail our way to success. Only a failure if you give up or you don't get the lesson, right? You know, I met the uh, billionaire owner of Spanx, uh, the women's undergarments, you know, uh, uh, and and, uh, Sarah Blakely is her name, beautiful human being. But she started with $5,000 and now she's, uh, you know, gazillionaire. But, (laughs) but, But I met her at a mastermind and she told me that her dad used to ask her and her brother on a weekly basis, what have you failed at this week? Isn't that an incredible question to ask your kids so they don't fear failure? I just love that. And so, so okay, burning desires are a critical piece. Then the next piece is you've got to make a decision, okay? And the Latin root for the word decision means to cut off because, you know, you, it, it is done. It's a 100% commitment. that way. It's not a one foot in, one foot out sort of thing. For example, if you're, you know, going to take the island in battle, you're going to burn your ships because you're taking their ships home. Okay, that's a decision. It is absolutely done. And when you do that, you're like a train on a track. You're committed. If you're not committed, you know, you can get knocked off track. And so, you know, that that's a critical piece. Um, I can keep going. You know, another one is positive expectation. You've got to you've got to expect to win because what you expect (coughs) is what you're going to get. So many people focus on, you know, pain and struggle. and, And and in fact, most people focus on what they don't want. You know, but but what you expect is what you get. And, you know, if you're listening to Bola here, I know you're a leader. 
And as a leader, right now, more than ever, your focus is so critical. I mean, don't get me started on the fake news that's out there right now. You know, the news is not there to inform us. It's there to scare us and maybe in some cases even control us. So be careful what you bring in. Bring in the good stuff. You know, on my podcast, I have these clips called Own Your Power. They're motivational clips. And even if you're not interested in real estate, I think you really enjoy them. The name of my podcast is Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. And I'm really proud of something. We just broke 12 million downloads, you know, and so, uh, you know, it's it's been really well received. But, you know, it, it, even if you don't listen to me, go on YouTube, you know, bring in the motivational clips and the the beautiful things instead of all the, you know, crap that's out there right now. So focus on the good stuff, you know, and then I'm going to tell you when you decide what you want and you declare it, God or the universe or whatever you believe will conspire to help you get it. Okay, when you expect amazing things, you get amazing things. And and I would also encourage you to try to remove negativity from your life, remove those naysayers, because, um, you know, they can squash a dream so fast. And when you have a dream, it's a fragile thread. And if you tell the wrong person, they can break that thread. So, you know, be around people that lift you up. You know, I've got a coaching program I'm super proud of. I've been teaching a little over four years. My students now own somewhere in, in the 50 to 60,000 unit range. And I'm just, it's, I'm one of my greatest accomplishments next to my kids. And it's because everyone in that group is lifting each other up. They're not, you know, they're not poo-pooing on other people's dreams. They're validating and empowering and, and supporting everybody. And, and so get around people like that. I mean, in fact, that lead me to the next thing you want to, you want to be around a, an empowering peer group. If you want to, you know, you show me who you hang out with, I'll show you who you are, okay? In every aspect of your life, your happiness, your health, and your finances, because who you hang out with is who you become. Um, And so very, very important that uh, you're very selective if with who you hang out with. And that was one of the reasons I was able to recover, you know, in, in losing everything. So I reassociated with what I wanted, my goals and, and why my goals are a must. And then I got around a, a super powerful mastermind group uh, through the Tony Robbins organization. Actually, it was called his Platinum Partnership. And there were people in there that were thriving through 08 and 09. And they're like, okay, 50 million, pick yourself up, stop whining, you big baby, and get off your feet and go make it happen. You know, that's the kind of people you want to be around, you know, that 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 will push you and, prepare, you know, it, you know, you want to be around people that think what you think is hard is easy as well, okay? And so, you know, if you're going to play tennis, you want to play somebody that's better than you or worse than you. Obviously, someone that's better than you. So get into a, a peer group of people People that want more out of life, that are doing what you want to do. And then the next thing is you got to take that first step, right, Bola? I mean, you got to take that first step. It's the hardest step. Dr. Martin Luther King said, you know, take that first step in faith and the next step will be revealed. Lao Tzu, thousands of years ago, said the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. But you got to take that step, right? Sometimes the most important decision of your life is to take that first step. You know, and remember, you know, it's those of you that are analytical, you don't have to see the whole path. You can drive all the way across the United States at night, seeing 50 feet in front of you. And you know, you're going to make it because other people have done it before. You know, you might have some obstacles, but you know, you'll make it. It's the same way with your goals and your dreams, but you've got to take action. And I see it in the real estate business. It's the kind of the law of the first deal. I'll have a student and they'll be like whining because it's been six months, eight months, then they haven't gotten a deal. And then they get a deal. And the next thing I know, they have five. Okay, it was wow. like, what just happened? You know, they realize that it's all between their ears, and it's it's been fear that's been holding them back. So the first step is super important. But you know, I think the biggest thing is probably focus, uh, because focus, you know, whatever you focus on grows larger. And you know, again, we connect through pain. Like like you know, if someone comes up to me, <laughs> let's. To give you an example, someone comes up to me and says, hey, Rod, how you doing? I'm like, oh, my God, I am freaking fantastic. Life is amazing. Well, they'll take a couple steps back and say Rod's off his medication, right? But if someone comes up to me and says, Rod, how you doing? I say, oh, God, my back is killing me, and I just lost 10000 in the stock market. They'll put their arm around me and say, I feel you, brother. See, we connect through pain. Be very, very careful about that, right? So, you know, again, what you focus on grows larger. They asked Mother Teresa, Uh, when she was alive, if she was anti-war, she said, no, I'm pro-peace. Absolutely. Right. It's kind of the same thing, but it's, it's your focus. And so back to focus for a minute, it's very easy to dilute your focus. In fact, if you ever see me publicly, 
you know, I try to minimize my decisions so that I'm able to focus better. Like I will almost always be in one of these black V-necks. I have about a hundred of them. I'm not exaggerating. And because I don't want to think about what I'm going to wear. And so, but, but, you know, anything you can do, especially right now in the world of social media, I mean, you'll, I even catch myself scrolling through social media when I'm watching a movie and see the problem with that is it hurts your focus, your ability to focus. You're you're making those micro decisions every few seconds. And the most successful people on the planet are the ones that are able to focus the best. In fact, I'll give you an example of this. Um, I listen to a couple of different podcasts. One of them is Tim Ferriss's. You know, I get excited about my 12 million downloads. I think he gets that a week, you know, but, but anyway, he interviews some of the best in the world at what they do. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jamie Foxx, actors, politicians, uh, the best uh, uh, business people like Ray Dalio, billionaires, athletes, Michael Phelps, you know, some of the best of the best in what they do. And I, st- and he deconstructs how they achieve that success. And I started to hear a pattern. They all meditate. And what does meditation enhance? Focus. So again, focus is super, super important. Um, Another big one, Bola, is playing to your strengths. You know, it's so easy to think that you should build your weaknesses. But if you play to your strengths, first of all, things that you're strong at are your greatest assets because you enjoy them. So you want to build what you enjoy. Why? Because you're going to get success much faster. I would tell you to hire a line or partner for your weaknesses and you focus on your strengths. And when you meet someone that you're working with that is strong where you're weak and the two of you get together, success is inevitable. I see it in this multifamily business all the time. I teach people how to buy apartment buildings and it's, it's a team sport. And so I tell them, find somebody that's strong where you're weak. You focus on what you're strong in because you love it. You're going to be passionate about it. And if you're passionate about it, you'll be able to influence people to invest with you, work with you, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, if you're not sure what you're strong at, you can take a personality test like a Myers-Briggs or a a DISC profile, D-I-S-C. I I know Tony Robbins has a free one, D-I-S-C profile, if you search that. And, And it really is very illuminating as to what your strengths and weaknesses are, how people should communicate with you, and so on. We use them when I hire people. But again, play to your strengths and 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 why because then you'll be passionate and when you're passionate i mean you can t- i hope you can tell i'm passionate because i freaking love what i do right <laughs> and, and, when, and when when you love what you do you never work another day in your life so why my wife puts up with me working sundays and everything else because she knows i love it so much so um i think let me think if there's anything else oh yeah uh, habits for success you know we all have these habits and and you know, I will tell you, um, um, my love language is books, okay? And there's a there's a guy who wrote the five love language. In fact, I was blessed to have him on my podcast, which is a real treat because I've given away thousands of his books. But I give love by giving gifts. And so my students literally get books from me almost every single month. And one of them is a book called The Slight Edge, okay? And it's about those little decisions you make every day that don't matter that day or the next day, but over time, they will traject your life up or down. Of course, you can, you can relate them to health uh, and things like that. But, but, and, and, and so that's a, that's a great book you should read about those little decisions, what you eat, if you exercise, if, you know, if you do have these success habits, and that's what I want to talk about. We all have habits. And so we need to consciously think about them. You know, habits, success habits mean, might be focusing on and having clarity with your goals, not getting caught up in busy work, but actual, you know, work that's going to produce results, taking massive action. Of course, being relationship and communication driven, you know, staying healthy for massive energy, you know, having incredible self-discipline. These are these are these habits that you want to develop to achieve the success that you're looking for. And then I think lastly is you've got to have tenacity. OK, you've got to recognize that you're going to have setbacks. Things are going to you're going to get your nose bloodied. You're going to get your butt kicked and you're going to have walls drop in front of you. But if you stay focused on your ultimate outcome and you change your approach whenever you have that wall drop in front of you and you stay focused on that ultimate outcome and other wall drops in front of you, you change your approach, focusing on that ultimate outcome. Success is inevitable. At some point, you will be a success. So tenacity will beat talent almost all the time. You know, it's grit, it's resolve, it's it's determination, it's, it's courage. You know, it's just not giving up. It's strength of will, it's character. It's all of those things it's backbone bravery. 
you know, there's a book called Three Feet from the Gold. Uh, it's a story about a miner that gave up on a mine that he was a true story. And yeah. he was three feet from a massive gold mine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's grit. And, and, and it's recognizing that setbacks are feedback. And, 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 you know, I, I will tell you when I do one of my live events, I, the next day people get a survey from me asking them what they thought. And yeah, of course, 99.9% of the stuff is positive, but I'm looking at the critical feedback so I can make it better. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I've been rambling a long time, Bola. I, I apologize. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bro. <laughs> that, that was, you know, awesome. That was beyond what I was uh Try, trying to get up from you but you know you. i'm taking notes <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you thank you and this is packed i i wish you know there's a way that i can just give a quick summary for people so that they can you know pick some of these things and i know that you know if people can follow this maybe for the rest of this year they are going to notice some you know improvement in their lives so I'm quickly going to do some uh, recap. I'm not going to do a perfect job in no way. So you said uh, the mindset for success is about goal setting. You talk about the bunny desires. You talk about how people need to overcome their limiting beliefs. You've got to want it. That's very, very important. And you said uh, people need to uh, identify what they want and they should have clarity about what they want. And why they want it. The why is what will drive you, okay? Identify what you want and yeah. why you want. Yeah, it. it's so the that. why that's the driver. Why is it important? That's what's going to get you up early in the morning. That's what gets you to stay up late at night. That's what'll get you to work Saturdays to grind for a few years, like most people won't. So you yeah. can live the rest of your life like most people can't. Absolutely, and I like the concept of fail to success. I know yeah. most people they hesitate uh, from taking that first step because they are thinking about failure. Right. Well, let me say something. Let me say something to you. There was there was this nurse in Australia, um, a hospice nurse. So she was taking care of patients when they were about to die. Right. Right. And her name was Bronnie Ware. And she asked him a question, Bola. And the question was, do you have any regrets? And she wrote a book about it. It's called The Five Regrets of Dying. You know what the number one regret was? It was not living the life I could have lived. It was I was living somebody else's life, not doing what I know I'm capable of. My friends, please fear that more than failure. I can't even imagine, you know, that, that feeling. So I'm sorry, I interrupted. Please, no, please this, continue. This with is good. You, you, okay. Rod, you have wealth of information that, you know, people need to, okay. More guys, those that are listening, please connect with lifetime cash flow. Uh, truly Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. And if you have Not any heard. interest in real estate, go to realestatewithrod.com because that's my website. And, and I've got tons of free videos and content and books and things like that. And yeah, and I, I do these, I do these three day live events. I've got one coming up in Denver, July 28th, 29th and 30th. And, and it's, and it's not a sales pitch. It's, it's just training. And geez, right now you can come for $197 for all three days. I mean, it's truly a no brainer. If you want to learn real estate, uh, like I said, in Denver and, and to, to come to, to get information on that, just text rod to 72345 and, uh, and, and it's, or go to multifamily bootcamp uh, forward slash Denver dot com but uh yeah um okay. that's that's where how you can learn a little more my podcast or come to one of my boot camps if you're interested in real estate yeah absolutely and you said you i like uh what you said about positive expectations as well yeah. when you expect amazing things you get amazing things that's yeah. awesome focus is also very important man a lot of lot of uh great information that uh, people would find. Let, let me give you another example of focus. Okay. You know, I'll get people that call me and say, Rod, how do I get rid of my student loan debt? And I say, wrong question. How do you make so much money that the debt's irrelevant? Because again, whatever you focus on is going to get larger. If you're focused on your debt or a negative, that's going to get bigger. Like, like the news, if you focus on the news, you get consumed by it. So be so really direct your mind, even if you have to put blinders on to focus on things that are going to push you forward and motivate you and empower you. That's that's focus is so critical, right? In fact, it's probably the most important thing I talked about next to knowing what you want and why you want it with clarity. Great. So uh, 
people need to be selective. The news cycle is crazy these days. A lot of, you know, information that are, you know, disempowering. Hey, listen, let's be real. It's crap. Okay. There's so much fake <laughs> crap out there. There's so many agendas happening. You don't know what to believe. Even with the uh, Russia and Ukraine thing, you don't know what to believe. Who's yeah. really the bad guy there? You know, you, you, it's crazy. I, we won't go down that rabbit hole, but the point is bring in the good stuff. Don't get sucked into that bad stuff. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to switch gear. Okay. Rod, let's talk about the 2008 crash that, you know, you lost $50 million. Yep. Most yep. people will never make that money in their lifetime. And how, how did you recover from that? Sure. Um, well, I, I, I just told you, honestly, it, it really is. There's other, there's nothing to add to what I just said. What I did, it would have been real easy for that loss to become my story. You know, uh, woe is me. I lost $50 million. I use it to teach, but it's not my identity or my story. And that's another thing. You want to be very careful. Whatever vehicle you use for your success, be it building a business, be it real estate, be it entrepreneurship, be it investing, make sure that that vehicle is not your identity. Okay. Because the vehicle may crash and burn, but if that fails, that's okay. But if you make it your identity, then then you then you've failed, and and you're not a failure. Again, that's just your vehicle. So be very very careful with that. But so what I did, Bull, is I just reassociated with what I wanted, and and why I wanted it. And yeah, listen, I I felt sorry for myself for for a while, for sure. I thought I was set for life. I mean, it sucked. I mean, let's be honest. It was no fun. Okay, it was no fun at all. But. Then I turned it around and and uh, and I, I built another business out of the ashes of that, which I ultimately sold a few years ago, turned into a ten million dollar company. I just I I innovated, I pivoted, and that's very important. If you own a business or you're in a place in a transitionary place in your life, employment wise or business wise. It's not uncommon. Like I remember, you know, when COVID hit, I was supposed to have 800 people in Orlando at a live event. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell am I going to do? You know, I was freaking out. If you go to multifamilyvirtualbootcamp.com, you'll see Rod's butt out in his backyard filming his video for his virtual bootcamp on his phone. It's still there. I don't think we took it down because I had to go virtual. I had to innovate. I had to immediately innovate and pivot to survive, right? And so, you know, maybe you're listening and you're in that place right now and you need to make a change. Don't be afraid of it. Just just recognize that anything you put your full attention and focus to is going to flourish. And so just pivot, innovate, do what you have to do. But you know, back then again, I had to reassociate with what I wanted. I got t- I got really in tune with what I wanted and why I wanted it, and then I changed the meaning of it. Remember this as well: life is about meaning, and you can place whatever meaning you want on a- an experience that you had, and it can be a positive meaning. And my meaning for what happened is I would have never met my wife if it happened. I have a supermodel, beautiful wife, more beautiful on the inside than the outside, but she is stunning on the outside as well. And I would have never met her, and I'd give it all. Up up again for her. So that is the meaning that I've now placed on that. And so, you know, again, you are able to redirect meaning to turn what could be a horrific situation into something that's that you grow from. Two people can have the same experience from outward experience, from outward view of perception being really bad. One person can come out stronger, the other person can come out destroyed. And it's the meaning they place on it. Absolutely. So I like that. The many we placed on things. So uh, there are many of my listeners that, you know, they want to go into a real estate business and most of them may not know how to start or where to start from. So what would you say is the more important? The, the number one thing is educate yourself. I don't care if it's with me or not. Go to YouTube University if you want. But again, if you can make it to Denver the end of July, it's three full days of training for 197 bucks. Yeah, you got to pay to get there and you've got to get a hotel or Airbnb or something, but but it's it's a hell of a deal if you want to come. Um, but you know, educate yourself. You could start with my podcast. I mean, it's very informative. I've I've superstars on there all the time. A lot of my students that are successful and a lot of super successful entrepreneurs that are on there. So listen to podcasts. Read books. You know, there's some great books on the top. I've got a great book. I give it away for free. If you go to my website, you can get it. You just pay the shipping if you want the physical copy. Uh, you and, and it comes with a lot of cool bonuses. So, so again, you've got to educate yourself. You can't dabble. Okay, don't think you can dabble in this business. You've got to educate yourself. So get in there and educate yourself. And um, 
I think the book's on there. If the book's not on there, DM me on any social channel and I'll, I'll get you the link so you can get it for, you know, you just pay seven bucks or something for the shipping. But, uh, but anyway, um, so educate yourself, number one. And another thing is, is you really need to do your goals. And so if, if you DM me on any social channel, I can send you a link on January 1st of every year. I do a goal setting session where I, I record it. It's professionally done with music. You get a guide to download. It's free. And I guide you through that process. If you DM me, I'm on every channel. They've even got me on TikTok now. Any channel you DM me, they'll send you that link and you can, and you and your family can go through your goals. It's very, very powerful to see what it is you want and why you want it. So feel free to do that. I should really put that on a, a I'll, I'll put that on a text link um, so that I can start doing that. I don't have it now, but I'll, I'll do that to, for, for future interviews. But, but if you DM me on any social channel, it's Rod Cleef, K-H-L-E-I-F. I'll get you that link so you can do your goals with your spouse or your kids or whatever. It's very powerful. Um, but, you know, on that note, let me say one other thing, Bola. You know, I... When I, I, I want to tell you uh, a, an example of a goal that I got, and, and please know that this, this is not me bragging. I just want to inspire you to, you know, your listeners to what's possible, uh, uh, you guys listening. Um, you know, I, I, I lived in Denver for 30 years, but I knew I always wanted to live on the beach. And of course, there's no beach in Denver, but I visualized, you know, the palm trees and the surf and the sand and all that. 20 years later, I built this incredible $8 million, 10,000 square foot mansion on the beach, which was unthinkable when I was 18. So there's a message there. And that is don't limit yourself. Whatever you think you want, write it down. I don't care what it is, you know, a yacht, a private island, a jet that starts the process. Okay. But that was unthinkable. But I will tell you that I lost that house and all the craziness. Okay. Uh, you know, um, uh, between 08 and a divorce, you know, I lost it. Now I live in a compound, you know, you can see this, my backyard behind me, I've got six buildings here. It's uh, pretty amazing. It's kind of funny um, uh, I, I, because God's got a sense of humor and I actually see my old house that I built across the bay. It's literally right on my backyard. But, but anyway, there's a message. So, so I worked for that house on the beach for 20 years, two months after I moved in. Okay. This is the house on the beach that I lost. I'm, I'm, I'm in the pool at night. I'm floating in the pool and I'm looking up at this testament to my ego, which is really what it was. It was to prove the world I was good enough. I told you I used to think I wasn't good enough. And that, that was for me to prove I was good enough. So I worked for this thing for 20 years, two months after I moved in. I'm looking up at this at night. It's an incredible house. I mean, to describe this house, I had a giant waterfall from the second floor balcony into the pool. You had to walk through the waterfall to get in the pool. Pools and magazines, elevator, wine cellar. I owned a beach on one side. And I had my boat lifts on the backside. It was called a Gulf to Bay. I owned a slice through an island. And I mean, to give you an idea, it's big spiral staircase up through the middle of the house. On the second floor, uh, around the staircase, I had an aquarium built that cost me almost $200,000. So this gives you an idea of the house. So I'm looking up at this thing and I got depressed. And I don't mean just a little depressed. I mean, I was really depressed. I'm like, what the hell? How could I be depressed? I've just achieved success like times 10,000. My beautiful family's inside sleeping, my wife, my kids. And I realized there were three things happening, which are really important, Bola, and I want to share. One of them is it's never about the goals. You need the goals, but happiness comes from progress and growth. But the other thing is you should never achieve a big goal without having other goals lined up behind it. You know, like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. You need a vision for the future. I didn't know what I was going to do next. So that also was going on. But it's again, it's about progress and growth. That's why it's so important for you to celebrate every week what you got done, because you're going to have setbacks and delays. But if you're growing, you're happy. But the big thing for me was I'd been totally focused on myself. Rod, 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 show the world I'm good enough, show the world I matter, blah, blah, blah. Well, I went out and bought some books. And this is when I got associated or learned about Tony Robbins. And so I went and saw him live. And by the way, shout out, if you can ever see him live, just do it. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. But, but I found out that he fed families for the holidays, and he's fed millions. And, you know, and, and I thought, you know, what a concept, do something for someone else. I had to be, I'm embarrassed, I had to be 40 to get that memo. But I came home, and I called my brother. I was going to visit him in Denver for Thanksgiving. I said, let's feed five families. And he called his church. His brother, my brother did and got five families that really needed help. And we bought the food and toys for the kids and frozen turkey and all this stuff. And the third family changed my life, Bola. We go up to this house and this woman is in this one, small, crappy one bedroom with five kids. And she comes out and she sees these boxes of food and the frozen turkey and the toys. And she starts crying. And her kids come out and a couple of the older ones start crying. And I start crying. 
and I'm hooked. And I'm blessed to say in the last 22 years, we have fed over 110,000 children for the holidays here in Sarasota and Man- in Bradenton, Florida. We've done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to local children. We've done tens of thousands of teddy bears to give the police departments for their officers to keep in their vehicles if they encounter a child that needs to, you know, in a traumatic situation needs to be comforted. And I don't say this to brag. There's a message in this. So you, those of you listening, I know there's some of you listening that are young and you want success so freaking bad. You got blood dripping from your teeth. You want it so bad. And I get it. But listen up. You must give back. Okay. It is critical that you give back. Now you find a cause that you're interested in give back. Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. Okay. Science is truly, uh, I'm sorry. Achievement is truly a science. If you want to learn real estate, come see me. I'll give you the map and the blueprint. It's you just have to take action, but fulfillment is an art. You have to find out what you're passionate about and do that. I don't care if it's children. I don't care if it's the environment, elderly, animals, whatever it is, and give back now. And don't say you'll do it when you have money. Do it right now. Why? Because the success will come faster. See, we've been taught to achieve to be happy. Okay, like we have to achieve to be happy. I'm going to tell you, if you incorporate giving back right now, you'll be happily achieving. I know it's a play on words, but it's an important one. Wow. Thank you very much for that. Uh, So uh, as we are handing our rod, where can my audience uh, find you? How can they connect with you? Bro? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so again, if you are interested in real estate, do everything you can to come to Denver. It's $197. It's not a sales pitch. It's true training for three days. It's, you know, uh, certainly you could have an opportunity to get into my coaching if you want, but you can, you'll can you leave that boot camp with enough information to go out there and make it happen. Um, and that's just text ROD to 72345 and we'll send you the link and the information. Um, and if you just want to listen to my podcast, there's so much great information there. You'll absolutely get a ton of value. It's called Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. And, and even if you're not interested in real estate, listen to my Own Your Power clips. Give, give me five minutes a week and I will juice you for the week because it's they're very motivating. There's music. You'll really enjoy those. And then lastly, my, my website is, is rodcleaf.com, but nobody spell my name. So go to Real Estate with Rod and that connects to my Rod Cleaf website. And there's tons of free materials. There are videos, articles, books, you name it. So thank you for having me on, my friend. I appreciate you. And uh, I uh, really love your energy and, and the, the whole premise of your show is exactly up my alley. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Rod. I appreciate your time. Uh, we have come to the end of the show today. Thank you. This episode of Winner's Ways podcast has come to a close. We hope you enjoy and learn something from today's show. We want you to win and excel in all areas of your life. And we regularly explore and share information with our listeners to empower them to win. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast for more tips and strategies to help you find the success that you've always dreamt of. And don't forget to rate and review so that we can continue to bring you more podcast episodes to empower you. We will love to have you again next week. Now, keep winning. Thank <laughs> you.